And now, Roma Wines, R-O-M-A, made in California for enjoyment throughout the world, Roma Wines presents... Suspense. Tonight, Roma Wines bring you Mr. Robert Young, a star of You'll Never See Me Again, a suspense play produced, edited, and directed for Roma Wines by William Spear. Suspense, radio's outstanding theater of thrills, is presented for your enjoyment by Roma Wine. That's R-O-M-A, Roma Wine. Those excellent California wines that can add so much pleasantness to the way you live, to your happiness in entertaining guests, to your enjoyment of everyday meals. Yes, right now a glass full would be very pleasant, as Roma Wines bring you Robert Young in a remarkable tale of... Suspense. So, you're walking out on me. What does it look like to you? Like you're walking out on me? Uh, got everything you need? Well, at least I'm glad you're showing your true colors. I'd rather have thought it out now than later. Didn't take you long, did it, baby? Uh, if you're looking for your coat, it's in there. Thanks. Need any money? I don't need anything from you, including your wedding ring. Here. You know what you can do with it. Sure, hawk it. Well... Pick a nice, quiet hotel. I don't have to pick a hotel. I'm no orphan. When you get good and sick of it, come on back. Maybe I'll still be here. You'll still be here. You'll never see me again as long as you live. (laughs) You'll never see me again as long as you live. You'll never see me again as long as you live, she said. If I'd known then what I know now, I guess that wouldn't have sounded so funny. All right, maybe I'm not the easiest guy in the world to get along with, but it's perfectly natural for a couple to have at least one good fight after they've been married nearly three months. And I just wasn't going to be the first one to say uncle, that's all. Still, you don't wait around forever when your wife walks out on you, even if you are playing hard to get. So the third evening, I put in a call. I knew all along she'd head for her mother's place. Anyway, she'd practically told me where she was going when she left. Hello? Oh, hello. Is uh, this Mrs. Alden? Yes. This is Ed. Uh, Janet's husband. Oh, yes. How is Janet? Well, isn't she there with you? With me? Why, no. Isn't she with you? No. That was all I needed to hear. I grabbed my hat and headed for the bus station. That was the only way she could have possibly gone to her mother's place at that time of night, by bus. First, I wanted to find out if there was anybody who could positively identify her as having left. The guy at the ticket office wasn't very bright. Uh, To West Hampton? Well, seems like I remember somebody like that. It would have been Monday night, just about this time. West Hampton, Monday night, huh? Mm -hmm. Well, maybe. I couldn't be sure, though. I... Uh, Well, give me a ticket. Where to? Where do you think? West Hampton. Blonde, uh, blue eyes, good looking. Oh, sure, sure, I remember her. Where'd she get off? I think it was uh, West Hampton. Well, good night. for the night, mister. Pumps are all out. I just want some information. Can you tell me where the Aldens live? Alden? Oh, yeah. They're those new people. Yeah. Well, uh, you go up the crossroad there, you turn to your left, go on down the hill, and it's one, two, three, let me see. No, no. It's the fourth. Fourth driveway on your right. Did uh, anyone ask you how to get there last Monday night? We're closed Monday, sir. Oh. A fourth uh, driveway on your right. I'm Ed Bliss, Janet's husband. Oh, yes. Come in, Ed. I've been looking forward so much to meeting you. I wish it could have been under different circumstances, though. Yeah. I'm so sorry. Hey, that's I haven't, oh, sure. I've nothing to worry about. No. I can't understand it. 
It's not like her to do a thing like that. I... Oh, uh, Ed, I want you to meet Mr. and Mrs. Farley. We were just playing a little bridge. How do you How do? You do? do? How do you and do? Uh, this is my husband, Joe Alden. <laughs> I guess that makes him your, uh, your uh, stepfather-in-law, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Joe, this is Ed Bliss. Pleased to meet you, Ed. Well, I guess we'd better be going. Oh, yeah, no. yeah, I guess we have. I certainly do hope that your wife... I, I, I wouldn't I, worry I, about Devon. Oh, you no. heard about it, did you? Oh, well, Ed, you see, they dropped in a little while after you phoned, and we thought it was well, all... Well, that's all right. Well, uh, thanks for asking. It's over. I... We'll come again real soon now. We'll do that. Well, well, good night, all. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Thank you. Goodbye. Oh, Ed, I hope you didn't mind about them. Well, I didn't think it was necessary to... Oh, it's all right. It's okay. Well, then, come on into the living room and tell us about it. Well, there's nothing much to tell that you don't know, is there? No. No, I suppose not. Sit down. Thanks. Uh, can't I get you something to eat? No, thanks. Or some coffee or something? I uh, think I'll pass up the refreshments this time. Well, I know how you must feel. Yeah, I guess you do. But I still can't. I, I just you, can't. You, uh... The, the, painted this room the, lately, haven't you? The, yeah. What about it? Nothing. It just looks a little funny, that's all. You think so? Yeah, and that brick wall in front of the house is kind of new, too, isn't it? You know I'm a bricklayer by trade, don't you? Well, now that you mention oh, it... Oh, Joe, how can you talk about... about... when... You, uh, better go on upstairs, Laura. <laughs> yeah, she's taking it pretty hard. Yeah. You seem to be bearing up all right, though. You haven't lost any sleep over it yet yourself, have you? I'm not her husband. Yeah, this isn't getting us anywhere. What was that? Laura. I guess she's going to bed. Oh. Well, I guess I better be going down and get that last bus. How about staying overnight? No, thanks. Suit yourself. Oh, wait a minute. I'll put the porch light on. I can see. That's better. By the way, uh, what happened? What do you mean, what happened? I suppose you and Janet had a row. What's that got to do with anything? I hear you got kind of a temper. Were you a little too quick with a flat of your hand? What's all this for? The benefit of the neighbors? It might be. Have you notified the police yet? No. And I don't like the way you ask questions. Okay, okay. Want me to walk down the bus with you? It's pretty dark. Maybe that's why I'd rather walk down there alone. Oh, now, wait a minute, Ed. I think you got me wrong. All right, maybe I have. Say goodnight to Mrs. Alden for me. Yeah, let us hear from you. Don't worry, you'll hear from me, all right. It was still plenty dark when I got back to town, but I took the shortcut at the corner just the same, a path across the vacant lot. Between the lot and my house, there's a hedge. I was just going through it when I stopped cold. There was a light on in my house, only it wasn't a regular light. It was the beam of a flashlight moving past the living room window. That could only mean one thing. Cops. Of course, it was Joe Allen that tipped them off. I just waited and then... I heard the front door open and close. I saw two men standing outside. And one of them went up the street. Pretty soon, I heard a car drive off. The other man was just a shadow then, standing by a tree in front of the house. You could see he was expecting me to come from the other direction. I stepped through the hedge and went over to him. Would uh, you be looking for anybody in particular? I might be. Who are you? Ed Bliss. Who are you? Detective Stillman, Bureau of Missing Persons. How'd you know anyone was looking for you? Oh, I'm just bright that way. Oh, yeah? Well, they like bright boys down at headquarters. Come on, let's go. <laughs> Suspense, Roma Wines are bringing you Robert Young in You'll Never See Me Again by Cornell Woolrich. Roma Wines presentation tonight in radio's outstanding theater of thrills, Suspense. Between the act of suspense, this is Ken Niles reminding you that it's really simple to please the palates of fastidious guests if you'll just be sure to serve Grand Estate Wines. 
for Grand Estate Wines presented by Roma afford you the ultimate in wine excellence. Discriminating wine users know this and regard your offering of Grand Estate Wines as a flattering gesture to their good taste. For in Grand Estate Wines, particular guests find the brilliant clarity, full fragrance, and mellow taste that distinguish truly outstanding wines. You see, Roma created this limited bottling of magnificent Grand Estate wines, especially to please those who know fine wine. With choicest grapes, infinite patience, necessary time, and age-old skill, Roma master vintners endowed each Grand Estate wine with fine qualities of wine greatness. So the host who possesses all five Grand Estate California wines is sure of pleasing all tastes, at all times. For smart entertaining, delight your guests with Grand Estate Medium Sherry, Ruby Port, or Golden Muscatel. For gracious dining, serve Grand Estate Burgundy or Sauterne. Remember the name, Grand Estate Wines by Roma, the crowning achievement of vintner skill. And now, Roma Wines bring back to our Hollywood soundstage Robert Young, who, as Ed Bliss in You'll Never See Me Again, continues a narrative well calculated to keep you in suspense. He stood there in the shadows watching my face, Detective Stillman of the Bureau of Missing Persons. I'd been expecting this to happen sooner or later, and now that it had, I was stunned for a moment. Well, come on, bright boy. They're expecting us at headquarters. Wait a minute. I want to talk to you. I'm in a jam. Oh, you're telling me. No, not the way you think. Will you come inside with me? I've been inside. Say, uh, what kind of a furnace do you have in your cellar, Bliss? An oil burner. The uh, kind that turns on automatic with an electric cut in? That's right. Why, is there a fuse blown? How'd you know there was a fuse blown? Was that why you were searching my house with a flashlight? Or was it because you didn't have a warrant? <laughs> Say, you really are a bright boy, aren't you? Well, come on, come on. We're going down to... Listen, I don't want to have any arguments. I want help, and I want it bad. Will you give me a break? What kind of a break? Oh, this is no place to talk. Will you come inside? Okay. But you better talk fast and talk good. Don't worry. Uh, the fuse box is right here. The flashlight. Mm -hmm. I always keep a couple of fuses on top of it. Oh, there they are. Uh, uh, let's go in the front room. Uh, after you. Okay. Now, uh, what do you want to talk about? Oh, don't you understand? She's my wife. I'm scared. Then why did you run out? Why didn't you tell the police? Because at first I thought it was just one of those things. Anyway, I knew where she'd gone, back to her mother's. How'd you know that? Because I went down after her. Because all kinds of people saw her go. Bus drivers, ticket sellers. Only when I got there, she wasn't there. How much uh, life insurance do you carry on her, Bliss? Uh, 25000 Wow, that's uh, quite a lot for a $75 a week architect, isn't it? Our mother paid for it, a wedding present. For heaven's sake, what do you think I did? Buried her in a cellar or something? No, we know you didn't do that. We looked. Oh, cut it out, will you? I love her. I... Oh. <laughs> We've only been married three months. <sighs> well, what do you want me to do? Oh, give me a break. Listen... If you take me down to headquarters now, it may be hours. Oh, it'll be hours, all right. And in the meantime, if there's still a chance... But but there's got to be. She's somewhere and she's in danger. I know it. Yeah, how? I tell you, I followed her down to her mother's place in West Hampton. There's a guy at the station who remembers selling her a ticket. The bus driver remembers her getting off there. And then she just disappeared. Then what? I went down to her mother's house. They hadn't seen her. But there's something funny about it. There's something funny about her mother and that, that stepfather. And there's something funny about the house. And about that room. What room? That living room of theirs. Listen, you've got to help me. Help me find her. You've got to go down there to West Hampton with me because I've got a hunch somehow that I'm the only one who can find her. All right, Bliss. All right, I don't know why, but I believe you. You do? Yes, you and go? I... I shouldn't believe you either because... Because what? What, uh, What was your wife wearing when she ran out on you on Monday night? What was she wearing? Yeah, 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 sure. You must remember what she was wearing. Well, she's wearing a gray flannel suit, skirt and jacket, you know, pink silk shirtwaist, patent leather high-heeled shoes, and one of those crazy little hats. Any baggage? 
Yeah, a little tan suitcase. You're sure of that? Sure. Well, that's why I shouldn't believe you. Why not? Because when you find somebody's clothes around, you usually start looking for the body right nearby. Well, well, what do you mean? Well, they weren't burned up because that fuse had blown. But we found every one of those things in the furnace down in your cellar about 20 minutes ago. <laughs> When he said that, I knew there wasn't much time. But he was going up to West Hampton with me anyway, and that was the main thing. Of course, first he had to route out the bus driver and the ticket seller and check my story with them just to be sure I wasn't trying to pull a fast one. But that was all right. I expected that. Then we climbed into the police car and headed out to West Hampton. He believed me now, all right. And that car couldn't have been pushed any harder if I'd been driving it myself. Still, it was broad daylight when we got there. We parked the car a little ways down the road and walked towards the house. See what I mean, Bert? Take that brick wall, for instance. Well, what about it? It's new. What did he build that for? It's not tall enough to hide the road. It's not even tall enough to keep a dog out. What did he build it for? Well, maybe he built it to keep in practice. Come on, come on, let's go in. It's awful quiet. Yeah, well, why not? They're probably in bed, and that's where I would be if I hadn't let you talk to me in the business. Listen, Bert, you don't think I... I'm here, ain't I? Go on, ring the bell. No answer. I'll keep trying. The shades are all down. I don't think... Well, come on. Let's try the back door. The shades are down on this side of the house, too. Huh? Look. The garage is empty. Yeah. Well, I guess our birds have flew to Cooper, all right? Bird, I don't like... Come this. on, come on. We'll try this back door anyway. Oh, it's locked. Here. Here's an axe. Yeah, uh, wait a minute. Let me try my keys. Oh, nuts. Ah, there. That got it. This, uh, this is the way to the front of the house? I guess so. I've never been back here. Yeah, this is it. Here's the front hall. There. There it is. What? The room. The living room I was telling you about. Oh, what about it? Snap on the lights. All right, I still say, what about it? I don't know, but don't you get something uh, funny about it? No, what? The lights, or something about the fresh paint, the rug. There's something, though. I know there oh, is. Oh, come on, come on. We're wasting time. There's something screwy about the whole joint. We went over the place from top to bottom. I wanted to get back to that room, and time was awful important. But Bert Stillman wanted to look into everything, which was only right and natural. Then we ran into something that was just about the last thing I expected. Say, uh, what's the store here? I don't know. I thought we covered everything on the ground floor before. Hmm. Locked. That must be some sort of back bedroom. Yeah. Well, the keys won't fit this one. Funny. The only room in the house that was locked. Yeah, well, maybe we've got what we're looking for. Uh, give me that axe. Uh. But, uh, but, Bert, don't you see? Uh, if she was here and then gone, they must have taken her. She's probably... <laughs> Oh, who's she? Mrs. Alden. Your wife's mother? Yeah. Say, uh, where's your daughter? Oh, please. Please. Come on, come on. Where is she? I, I don't know. Was she here? Yes. Where's she please. now? I don't know. Did she leave with your husband? I don't know. Why didn't you tell me she was here the other night? Joe told me not to. She was here. And the next morning, Joe told me she'd left. And this morning, he left. <laughs> what did you lock yourself up in here for? I, I knew when Joe left this morning that something, something terrible. And when you came, I was frightened. I... Come on, come on. Where? Why don't you get it? For some reason, the stepfather's put the snatch on her. We've got to put a call through to headquarters and get the highway patrols on the watch for him. Well, what about her? Oh, she comes along. No, please. Come on, come on. Bert. Yes? There's something wrong about this. You bet your life there is. No, I mean, why would he do it? What, what motive would he Let have? Let me worry about the motive. You worry about your wife. And it's got some connection with what's wrong about that room, whatever it well, is. Will you forget about the room? We've got to get... I want to look at it just once more. Listen, I know you. It. Listen. Do you want your wife back or don't you? There's no time to stand... Bert. I've got it. Got what? It's lopsided. Don't you see? It's not on the square. How do you know? I'm an architect. Look, the lights aren't in the middle of the ceiling. The windows aren't in the middle of the wall. Well, so what? The design of the rug is wrong. It's, it's, it's cut off too close to that wall. It's... Bert. What? That wall. That's why the room has just been repainted. 
That's why I built the brick wall in front of the house. I don't get it. One wall of this room is a dummy. Built out in front of the real one. That's why the room looks lopsided. That's why I built the brick fence to get bricks without arousing suspicion. Which wall? That one. Inverted must be. Hollow. Give me that axe. You don't think that... The Janet. Bert, give it to me. Yeah, get back. Get back. You heard me. Get back. This is all of The Joe. The Janet. Answer me. Answer me. He can't. He can't get the devil. He couldn't have done a thing like that. Hey. Ed. Yes. Didn't, uh. Didn't you say your wife was... was young? Twenty-three. Well, then you can look. This is an older woman. Do you... Oh, you know her? No! Well, there's your motive. Yeah. But... But who could it be? I don't know. Well, she... She must know, the mother. She can't even talk. Say, Ed. Ed, you would know if she was the mother, wouldn't you? Of course I... What? No, I wouldn't. I never saw Janet's mother until I came here to the house Monday night. Oh. Mrs. Alden. Mrs. Alden, answer me. I'm not Mrs. Alden. That's Mrs. Alden. It was just a question of time now, whether we'd get back there in time to stop it. It all fit together now. What Bert didn't know, he got out of the woman on the way back. Did you know Joe Alden before? No. Not before I came to their house in Eastport to, to take care of her. I was her nurse, and, and Joe and I... Well... Who got the idea we, to kill her? You or Joe? He did. When he saw me giving her a sedative one, she, she was pretty sick. Premeditated, eh? Why did you do it? Money, of she, course. She kept a lot of bonds around the house. That's what Joe wanted. Is that uh, why you moved from Eastport to West Hampton? Yes. Nobody knew us in West Hampton. We moved in at night. They thought there was only the two of us. They thought I was the real Mrs. Alden. When did he do it? About a week after we got there. One night. By morning, she was where you found her. We were doing better than 80 most of the way, but I still didn't think we'd make it. And naturally, Bert was afraid to put the local cops around the house for fear Alden would spot them first and take Janet away. And, 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 and uh, do it somewhere else. If he hadn't done it already. Because Bert had the picture cold now. Janet had come to the West Hampton house and found her mother was missing before Alden had been able to make his getaway. So Alden had to kill Janet, too. He knew where he was taking her because of the clothes in the furnace of my house. That was the tip-off that Joe was going to try to plant it on me. The only break I had. At least I knew where to look if I could get there in time. At the outskirts of town, we picked up a police escort. Bert made them lay off when we got near the house. We drove up the side street and parked a little ways off. We walked up to the house. There was a car in front of it. That Alden's car? Yes. All right. Now, you're coming in with this lady, but the first sound out of you and I'll shoot, and I mean that. I know. Got your keys, Ed? Yeah. Yeah, quiet. Look. Look, there's a light. That's the door to the cellar. Come on. Digging. The lights have gone out. He must have heard us. Put on your flashlight. Come on, let's go. There he is. Ed, why you? Oh. Oh. Hey. Double. Hey. Ed, you shouldn't have done that. He killed my wife, didn't he? Switch on the light. Where is she? Maybe it isn't too late. There she is. She's dead. Yeah. Yeah, chloroform me. You smell it? Come on, get that cloth off her face. It's too late. Can't you see? Yeah, yeah, I'm afraid, Ed. All right. Hey. Wait a minute. What are you doing carrying a gun, Ed? I got a permit. Mm. Anyway, what's the use of asking questions like that? Say, no. She's moving. What? She's alive. Here. Come on, Ed. Give me a hand. Quick. Ed. Here, Ed. Come on. Help me. I... Hey. Hey, Ed. Where are you going? Put up your hands, Ed. Okay. They're up. Ed. You could at least have done it yourself. Instead of hiring a murderer. What did you uh, 
uh, do it for, Ed? The money? What do you think? For fun? <laughs> Go ahead. Talk. Well, anything to make you happy. Would have been perfect if Alden had killed her. When he first got her in the cellar, like I told him to. Maybe he had a sneaking idea I was going to double-cross him. He was stalling until the last minute. I don't know. Anyway, it won't do him much good where he is. Mm. What did, uh, what'd you have on him, Ed? The mother, his wife. I'd been up there before, alone. I knew he killed his wife because I'd seen a picture that Janet had of the real wife. I spotted the room right away. Told Alden I'd split the money with him if he took care of Janet. And uh, if he didn't, go on. I knew I could pick a fight with Janet, and I knew she'd run up to her mother's. And I went up there to make it look good. After I left, Alden was to call the cops like he did. You'd take me down here to headquarters, and while you were giving me the old third degree, Alden was supposed to plant the body in the cellar. That way, I was in the clear, because you know I couldn't have done it while I was down here talking to you. You know she hadn't been there before because you'd look. That's why I planted the clothes and the furnace. Remember? So you would look. Mm. I had an alibi. Nobody had a thing on Alden, unless I squawked. He had to take that chance. Yeah, looked pretty good there for a while, didn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Your, um, your wife's outside. Want to say anything to her? Huh? Oh, just tell her I said, you'll never see me again. by Roma Wines, R-O-M-A, made in California for enjoyment throughout the world. And now, here is our producer-director, William Spear, with a basket of Grand Estate Wine, a gift for the distinguished star of tonight's suspense play, Robert Young. Bob, these Grand Estate Wines are our way of thanking you for a really wonderful performance. Well, thank you, Bill, for this wonderful basket. You know, Mr. Young, each Grand Estate Wine is a limited bottling of outstanding excellence, presented by Roma the greatest name in wine. Each precious bottle is distinguished by brilliant clarity, full fragrance, and mellow taste. Yes, the name Grand Estate Wine stands for the ultimate in wine goodness. I'm impressed, and I've learned something. Well, discriminating wine users everywhere are learning, Mr. Young. They're finding out that Grand Estate Wines offer a rich new experience in wine enjoyment. Choicest grapes and the patient perfection of wine making serve to establish Grand Estate Wines by Roma as the crowning achievement of vintner skill. Very convincingly spoken, Ken. And Mr. Young's gift basket of Grand Estate wines will convince him still more. Bob, it's always great to have you on suspense. I'm sorry we had to make such a heel out of you at the end, but <laughs> that's what you get for being such a two-way stretch of an actor. Well, I'll get a two-way verdict on the show when I get home tonight. Kids will be furious because they know I'm such a nice guy, but my wife will say that suspense is the only show that ever lets me play my true villainous self. <laughs> How is Betty? Fine. Well, congratulations again, Bob. I hear that uh, Lady Luck, the picture you've just finished at RKO, is swell. Well, I'll be looking forward to seeing it. Well, you're very kind, Bill. Uh, who's on suspense next Thursday? It's a double threat. Lloyd Nolan and Vincent Price in a play about two lifelong enemies who go away on a hunting trip together, both knowing that only one of them is ever coming back alive. Well, it sounds terrific, Bill. I won't miss it. Swell. And now, Bob, with my compliments and Roma's, here's that gift basket of Grand Estate wines. Thank you again. And good night. Next Thursday, same time, listen to Vincent Price and Lloyd Nolan on Suspense, presented by the Roma Wine Company, Fresno, California. CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.